No bullshit. You want to kill yourself? Oh, for Christ. Shut up! Yes or no? You want to die? Yes or no? I got the job done. What the hell do you want? You want to the question? Oh, what do you want to hear, man? Do you want to hear that sometimes I think about eating a bullet? Huh? Well, I do. I do. I even got a special one for the occasion with a hollow point. Look, make sure it blows the back of my goddamn head out. Do the job right. Every single day I wake up and I think of a reason not to do it every single day. And you know why I don't do it? This is going to make you laugh. You know why I don't do it? The job. Doing the job. Now, that's the reason. You, you want to die. I don't. I'm not afraid of it. I ain't afraid of it. Yeah, take my gun. Don't nibble on the barrel. Pull the trigger. Go ahead, pal. Be my guest. Go ahead if you're serious. You should tempt me, man. Put it in your mouth. Bullet might go through your, your ear and not kill you. Yeah, under the chin. Yeah, 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 under the chin. <laughs> Friends are. The fireplace. Don't lie to me. Honestly, we went over to Mikey's dad's place and we found a map that said that underneath this place there's buried treasure. Well, don't give us none of your bullshit stories, huh? <laughs> hey, kid. I want you to spill your guts. Tell us everything. 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 Okay, I'll talk. <laughs> In third grade, I cheated on my history exam. In fourth grade, I stole my Uncle Max's toupee and I glued it on my face when I played Moses in my Hebrew school play. In fifth grade, I knocked my sister Edie down the stairs and I blamed it on the dog. I mean, to a, to a summer camp for fat kids. And then once during lunch, I got nuts and I big down and they kicked me out. thing I ever done. I mixed up all this fake puke at home and then I went to this movie theater, hid the puke in my jacket, climbed up to the balcony and then, then I made a noise like this. And then I dumped it over the side. Oh, and all the people in the audience, then, then this was horrible. All the people started getting sick and throwing up all over each other. I never felt so bad in my entire life. Mom, they're going to like this kid, Mom. <laughs> Hit puree. No, I'm too young. No, I want to play the violin. <laughs> Not my hands. Not, Not my hands. Get the truth. Please, Why please. get the truth? Uh, Where do you get truth? Please.
remember you? Listen, can you tell me where I can find the lovely Sergeant Murdoch? Well, as a matter of fact, Dolores, he's cowering down on all fours right behind this counter. <laughs> oh, oh wish it. Listen, where's the Sergeant? I want to see him. Well, he's not here at the moment, Dolores, but, uh, hey, you know, he's talking nothing but you all week. Shut my mouth. Hey, the man's on fire. What's the matter, baby? Oh, a little sciatica. Oh, <laughs> you tell him Dolores was here. You tell that man that he's the jam in my jelly roll. <laughs> I'll see you, baby, okay? okay. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Dolores says that you're the jam in her jelly roll. That's a lot. I heard. <laughs> That's a lot of woman. Oh, shit. She calls me all the time. Hey, she leaves me notes. What am I going to do, Riggs? Well, you shouldn't have let her on in the first place. Kaboom! Kaboom time! Hello! <laughs> hey, everybody! It's time for Entertainment Landfill! I am your host, the J-Strom. And it is episode 314, and I don't do the show alone. I also do it with Stephen the Pop Culture's Alan. What's happening? Hello, Stephen. Hello, Jason. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. Oh, what do you want to hear, man? Yeah, what do you want to hear, man, Stephen? <laughs> I put that in the intro for Heather because uh, I say that all the time. I've kind of toned it down, but I'll say, what do you want to hear, man? Like that, and it drives her crazy. <laughs> oh, what do you want to hear, man? <laughs> and she's like, you sound nothing like Riggs. And I'm like, I sound exactly like him. <laughs> do you really want to jump? But, uh, yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> welcome to the show. It's time to do the show. And it's going on right now, and I'm talking. So this is the show. Hello. Hi, Stephen. Hello. Did you have a good week? Yes. Stephen, I wanted to tell you this story about uh, what a burger breakfast. Uh, taquitos. Do you enjoy the taquitos there? I do. You know, it's egg, and you can get sausage, bacon, or potato with cheese sometimes, mm -hmm. and it's rolled up in a tortilla. Uh, I went there and I said, yes, I'll have two sausage taquitos and an order of hash brown sticks. They have hash brown sticks mm -hmm. there. And the person goes, uh, you want just sausage? And I went, excuse me, what? Do you just want sausage? And I go, I want egg and sausage and no cheese. She was like, oh, okay, okay. So uh, I pay for the order. I get home. You know, I open it up and I take a bite. And I'm like, what it's... the F? Sausage it's... just oh. crumbled up in a wrapped <laughs> tortilla. And I was like, how stupid is this person? They even asked me. Yes. And I said, no, I want egg I would have checked it. at that point. You know, I, I, <sighs> I've, I've experienced this before. But it's like, I didn't I, I think understand. anyone could be that stupid. I ordered it, went through Jack in the Box, got the ultimate breakfast sandwich, mm -hmm. and I've had trouble it by my house, so I pull up enough for the next car, open it up, it's the wrong sandwich, so I had to go park, go inside, this isn't what I wanted, mm -hmm. and then they still just oh, what do you want to hear, man? Leave me with a sandwich, they're like, you want this one? They're like, no, just keep it, so I've got two sandwiches just keep now. it. <laughs> You know, every once in a while when you go to a fast food place, you get a bonus something. Like, I didn't order this. Oh, an extra sausage biscuit. That's cool. But to get it that wrong, when mm -hmm. I say I want a sausage taquito, it means I want sausage in addition to egg. Yes. You know, because they have three different kinds with potato, with bacon, with sausage. I want the sausage kind yeah. with egg. Otherwise, it's not a taquito. It's a friggin' tortilla with, with just sausage. sausage in it. And, you know, uh, I tell my wife, and she's like, did you call and complain? I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. But um, she's always, like, wants me to call and complain. <laughs> but I'm like, at that point, what do I do? Do I go back? Because it's not close. Scramble some eggs real close. Yeah. Scramble some eggs real quick at home yeah. and then put them on. Uh, <laughs> but because one time recently we got Chipotle, and we each got the burrito bowl. Mm -hmm. And they made her order the same as mine, even though our orders were vastly different. Like, I like uh, guacamole. She doesn't. She likes sour cream. I don't. <laughs> they just copied my order and did it twice. So she was, like, really mad that, you know, her did dinner was... Did you call that ruined. one in, or...? Uh, she called, and they said that you can uh, 
online they have a place where you can complain. Gotcha. So I went on the website and I did that, and I even had a nice little uh, screenshot of my receipt that sent them, and then they sent me two. Check this out, Stephen. Two free burrito cards. Woohoo! Like right here. So they actually did something. Nice. Now, Whataburger, uh, who knows what they would do. They would probably replace it, but I don't want to go back, you yeah. know? Bastards. <sighs> Shut up! Yes and no! That's when you got to take a picture when you unwrap it. Just take a picture. <laughs> Well, I remember one time I did. I got fries that were so disgusting that I took a screenshot and I tweeted Whataburger. And I was like, is this the kind of fries you want your customers to have? And, of course, they didn't respond or anything. But they were, like, dark brown. I was like, oh, Jesus. I actually felt like uh, driving up there and just throwing them against the window. Like, I don't want my money back. Just, uh, just like, throw it at them. Oh. He's the jam in my jelly roll. Who is? Steven? Sergeant Mur- Sergeant, Sergeant Mur- Murtaugh. <laughs> Can't get that out. Now, Steven, I am almost finished with the third Witcher book. I'm not even close <laughs> to the first. I one. literally, I have about 60 pages <clears throat> left. I'm this about, has been a real page turner. I'm just over half. Once I get into it and get a, a, a rhythm going, it's fine. But yeah, yeah, sometimes you, it's, it's hard to get that going for yeah, me. Yeah, you just... Uh, just, because especially if I have to skip a night or two because of work or have something. Have you finished, like, the thing is it's stories. Like, you could choose, yeah. I'm going to read this one story tonight. Yeah. And then the next time I pick it up, I'm going to read the next story, you know, because mm-hmm. they're short stories. And you could do that with the next book, too. And then this one is a novel. And uh, it's been pretty cool, like, the way it's... Because the first two books deal mostly with Geralt as the main character, and it doesn't cut away from him he's like the character that every story focuses on so now this is cutting across the the land to another character and then back over here and what's so great is the those first two books of short stories prepare you of you introduce you to those characters so by the time you read that that novel um you know who they are and you know so much like i realized like oh it's almost like i did my homework like i know who these people are and where they're from and uh, some people have started with the first novel before those books of short stories, and I could see like, like you're, you know, you're really doing yourself a disservice by not knowing things, and you're you're basically missing out on cool like Easter eggs and stuff because they've even referenced some of the short stories, which is really cool. And I'm like, oh, I know what they're talking about there. I feel so special. Yeah, I'm with I'm with the uh, the wizard who's using the I guess fake name or pseudonym. Oh, you're in. Uh, a uh oh god what is that called where he killed the creature brought it into town and nobody wants to pay for it he killed a kikimura yeah, yeah. and he's gone in and stregobor is the wizard there yes yeah i know what the, uh exactly what that story is i'm trying to remember what it's called uh something of reason or whatever but it deals with uh levels of evil like mm. do you deal with the lesser evil or the the worst evil or whatever, and it deals with Geralt's kind of uh, philosophy, how he deals with stuff like that, which is funny. Um, how, what do you think of Geralt so, so far as you're reading? Interesting? Yeah. I mean, he's fun to read about. You know, I like the the one I read where, you know, the, the, the story right before it where it's the guy who was cursed. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was he could control his house, make it do whatever he wanted. Yeah. And then, you know. Do you like the little subtle kind of referencing of fairy tales in the story? Yeah. It's kind of like, did you get kind of a Beauty and the Beast vibe yeah. from that? And this one, there's kind of references, kind of Snow White-ish in there or something. So I haven't gotten that far yet, so. Oh, okay. Well, I want you to get to the next story because they introduce a character, yeah. Geralt's best friend. And... This is the way how I feel about Geralt's best friend. There was life before I knew he existed, and now life after. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Ross and I were talking about that. Like, how can we go back to a time where we didn't know this character? Mm-hmm. Because that's how great he is. Yeah. So wait till you meet uh, the Witcher's best friend, and it's uh, it's really great. Especially because you're like, why are they friends? I don't understand. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. I'm hoping. Uh, I don't know how far Ross is. I think he's. You know, he's. 
uh, near where I am, possibly. I want to do that next book show because I want to get the fourth one done and be like, hey, four book shows, guys, more than we did on the Dark Tower. We only did three of those. <laughs> but uh, I'm really enjoying it. I'm glad that I read them. I'm really kind of like fully immersed in this world and the characters. Did you get Lee on board now? Or no. Uh, <laughs> I haven't heard. All I heard from him was, Oh, what do you want to hear, man? And I was like, Oh, oh calm down. Come on. <laughs> All right, uh, Stephen, we have a voicemail. Yes. What do you say we check it out? Let's check it out. And now it's time to hear some voicemail. Yeah, we got a voicemail from somebody we don't hear from often, so it's kind of oh. exciting. Well, don't give us none of your bullshit stories, huh? No, I'm not. This isn't a bullshit story. It's not made up. This is one of our listeners we haven't heard from for a while, and I'm really excited. Stephen, let's check it out. Oh. Hi guys, it's Hannah. Long time no speak. Uh, just wanted to say I'm listening to the show again because I have both of my kids out of the house for certain hours of the day now. Woohoo! Um, and I'm so pleased to be listening to you again and to hear you guys have so much fun. The DVD song brought such a smile to my face and I've been sitting here working away, <laughs> chuckling away and I just wanted to say that I really appreciate you. All right. Bye. Bye, Hannah. Thank bye. you so it's much for writing. That's awesome. to hear from you. That's awesome. Yeah, that was fantastic. Uh, Stephen, what do you say we get into some entertainment? Yes. Huh? Yes, entertainment, Stephen. Uh, it's what I, we live for. I haven't seen any movies. I haven't seen uh, it yet. I'm going tomorrow night. Going to see it tomorrow. Melissa will be seeing it tomorrow at seven, I believe. Are you the least bit scared? No. <laughs> Are you interested in Hustlers with J Lo? No. Her and some other strippers, kind of like stealing uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, credit cards and stuff from yeah, like they're, they're scamming rich guys. Yeah. They're, drugging them and using all their cards and stuff yeah and then there's the movie goldfinch we'll talk about those later in uh, mm -hmm. rotten tomatoes but i'm interested on september 20th Stephen, rambo last blood mm -hmm. do you get it first blood last, last blood. blood let me ask you this i don't know any spoilers He's gonna die is he gonna die that's what i was gonna ask yes is I don't know. rambo because i've heard that he kind of wanted uh to kill Rambo off before, and he, mm, you know, never got a Studios chance. Studios probably do. couldn't, wouldn't have been spendable. Yeah, like, no, no, what are you doing, man? This is a cash cow. Yeah. So. He'd be like, oh, here's my script. Well, Rambo dies. No, we're not going to produce this one. You're going to have to rewrite it. Will you go see that with me? Sure. Awesome. I want. I definitely want to see it. I've seen, I think I've seen every Rambo in the theater. Really? Yes. Every Rambo? I think so. I'm trying to think. I don't think uh, I ever saw uh, the third one, Rambo 3. I think yeah. that's when I was, like, tuned out. <laughs> that when uh, he went to, like, the Middle East. Wasn't that yeah. the third one? Isn't the third one Russia? The first one, he goes back to Vietnam. The second one... No, 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 wait. The first one, he's in a small town America. First blood. Yes. The second one, he goes back to Vietnam. And yes. the third one, he... Isn't it Russia? No. I thought it was the Middle East. <laughs> I, I remember this because the girl I was going with, I went with her, her mother, and her mother's boyfriend. And he spoke the language. What? Oh, okay. and so that you know, we saw translation, and he was like, "That's not exactly what they said." <laughs> well, yeah. So I was thinking it was the Middle East. I, I did be. see. Uh, was it called John Rambo or though? No, it was just called Rambo, like the most recent one where he was, where they would like were like in. Uh, I mean, I've seen Rambo four in a theater, but yeah, I know it's. I enjoyed the film, but. It's like it leaves your brain as soon as you watch it. <laughs> that's the way. It, that's the way it feels. Still war here. I know there is still war here. 
But uh, yeah, do you remember the one where it's like in? Uh, okay. Oh, it is Russia. Yeah, you're who, right. Who are, you know who is it that the Beastie Boys? But were they go always, through Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Who is yeah. it the Beastie Boys are always raising money for in that part of that region? That's where the third Rambo, the fourth Rambo, took place. You know, the one where he was much older. Uh, um, he was like uh, helping the people, and it was really violent, uh, like extra brutal violent. Burma. Burma, that's it. He was in Burma, <laughs> and it was, like, violent as hell. So that, and, that one I probably didn't. I don't know if I saw that one. You in the should theater. see that one. That one's good. In the theater. I've seen it. And at the very end of it, he goes back to America, and you see him going on his farm. So it looks like in this one, uh, Last Blood, he returns home. Everything's great, except there's, like, these asshole drug cartel guys or something harassing his granddaughter or something. Yeah. And, oh, hell no, you almost have Rambo's granddaughter. He's going to kill all of those guys. And I can't wait to see that. That's going to be friggin' awesome, yo. Man. Well, see, we have some sh- uh, shows to check out on the Roku. So what do you say we uh, do that real quick? Because <laughs> uh, we got a lot of stuff, a lot of content, guys. Let's keep it mo- going. You know what I'm saying? Steven, help me. What's on our Roku, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Heather and I finished Four Weddings and a Funeral, the series on Hulu. You would like that a lot, Steve. It's very romantic. Oh, what do you want to hear, man? Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's very romantic. <laughs> Shut no, up! I mean, yes no. romantic movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a great show. I really liked it. It's funny. <laughs> it's heartwarming. No bullshit. No bullshit. No bullshit. Now, Steve, I want to talk to you about a show called a very Brady renovation. Mm-hmm. And I've been seeing the commercials for it. I was telling Heather, you know, Heather's like, of course, she doesn't want to watch it. First mm-hmm. of all, she doesn't want to look at the Property Brothers, and neither do I. But I'm like, come on, I watched the Brady Bunch when I was a kid. Like, I watch it every day. Yeah. Like, I wanted to be a Brady. I wanted to live in that house. And I was like, just watch a few minutes with me. And then it begins with this song, and she is out like immediately. She's like, turn it, turn it. We're not watching this. Watch it later. Download it somehow. We're not even going to record it on our DVR. It's not allowed in this house. And I was like, what's the big deal? So let me play you the theme and tell me if you think it's cringe-inducing, okay? I'm sure. All right, here we go. Here's the story of a TV family. We all thought lived inside this famous home, but the real house we all remember was not at all as shown. So we bought the place and brought back all the Brady's, who know every room and corner in and out. And we paired them with the HGTV family, that's the way we all remade the Brady house, the Brady house, the Brady house. That's the way we remade the Brady house. Shut my mouth. Yes, that's right. It's a very Brady renovation. And I was just like, oh, that was kind of hard to watch. But uh, here's the thing. But you made it through, right? Yeah. A while back when they said that it was the Brady house is being sold, everybody, I like immediately tweeted, HGTV should buy this house and turn it into a show. And that's exactly what they did. <laughs> like, I mean, everybody was thinking that apparently. Yeah. And uh, at the beginning, you know, the one of the the property brothers, one of those twins, he uh, basically explains something about the house that I didn't know, and it kind of freaked me out. Let me play this for you, Stephen. It's the story of television's favorite blended family, the Brady Bunch. The show about a lovely lady, a man named Brady, yes, and their you know six kids premiered in 1969, oh ran for five years in prime time, and has lived on in reruns, spinoffs, and sequels ever since. We all feel like we grew up in their iconic ranch-style home, but there's just one thing. What's going on? <laughs> the house we all remember never actually existed. 
If you look at this house, it is nothing like the inside of what you saw in the studio set. That's right. The house that was filmed for exterior shots way back in 1969 looked totally different inside from the soundstage where the Brady Bunch was shot. But that is about to change. HGTV bought the house with one goal in mind, to transform it into the 70s masterpiece we all know and love. This is very important. It needs to be exact. It's very we assembled eight of HGTV's yeah. best and brightest builders and designers to take on one of the most ambitious projects in TV history. Yes, that's right, Stephen. This is serious shit. Um, okay, I didn't realize that the inside of the house looked nothing like the TV show. I know it was on a set, but I figured maybe they... Kind of duplicated it yeah, to some extent. They walk in, and it's so tiny inside, it's not even a two-story home. Right. That part freaked me out, that it's not two stories. And they showed how we're going to add a second story. But it can't be too tall where you see it from the front of the house. We can't change the way the house the looks front from profile. the front. Yeah. And so they showed how they were going to do it. Like with uh, blueprints, like actually when you walk in, we're going to create the living room and the stair steps, but where the kitchen goes, that's not actually going to be where the kitchen is. We're going to put the kitchen back here, but create it exactly like it, the kitchen. I'm like, wait, what? It's not going to have the same layout. We want to recreate Greg's attic bedroom. Remember when they, he moved to the attic, but they can't do it in an attic because there's no attic. So... There's actually a downstairs rec room, and they're turning that into the attic bedroom. And I'm like, wait, that's cheating. You can't do that. <laughs> so they are duplicating everything in the house, but they're putting it in weird like, spots. Kind of not doing it exact. Yeah. I mean, they're, like the kids' bedrooms, they're going to set that up where they're they're next to each other, and they share a bathroom and everything. But it's going to be in that addition upstairs. And the mom and dad's room is going to be downstairs, or it's just really wacky. And uh, what's funny is a lot of the Brady, you know, kids when they show up, you know, I'm calling them kids are way older than me, but yes, yeah. Bobby, who is the youngest one, he looks exactly the same except he has gray hair yeah. and he's going bald. He's like an older man but he still looks the same <laughs> it's bizarre like he doesn't his, his, his face, face hasn't changed his face hasn't changed at all you know like uh peter you know he's a little you know heavier or whatever you know greg he looks he looks he's showing his age yeah uh, marcia looks great jan looks relatively normal uh cindy you know she looks a little she looks like she's probably smoked quite a bit you know and you can just tell a smoker when you see one you know <laughs> But uh, they're you know they have them helping them with certain aspects. But I think the funniest part is when they're looking for an exact pot or that horse. They made a big deal about the horse that's in the living room. Yeah, and they actually found they weren't sure if it was one from the actual TV show or if it was from the uh, movies. But they didn't care. Like, hey, the movies they try to replicate it, right? So right, we can right. use this horse. But the legs were smashed. So uh, they had another horse that wasn't exactly the same, but they could duplicate the legs, like mold the legs and use them for the the one from the movie. And it was funny, the actor, Christopher Knight, who plays Peter, he actually, uh, I don't know if he owns the company, he owns a stake in a company that does 3D type uh, imaging and modeling and stuff. And they used his company to scan the horse and then do that. That was pretty cool. And they, uh, people, you know, they put the search out hey do you guys have anything that's exactly like from the brady house like any of the old furniture and stuff and people sent in you know actually i have these exact replica of the grapes that were on their coffee table in their living room <laughs> and they were like hey could you donate them or send them in and they're like sure so they sent in and they have the grapes now and the, they even find the pot that they knocked over with the ball and that you know water was leaking out of it uh it's a silly show, but you know I like I love the Brady Bunch when I was a kid, so it's fun. Are they going to play that theme every time about remodeling? God, I, I don't know. <laughs> that was pretty pretty rough, man. The Brady Bunch. That's right, and uh, so then you just have to TiVo or just skim through that opening song. What's funny is, you know, uh, they get, gave certain tidbits where I was like, oh, that's interesting. The window on the front of the house that you see, like, you know, they always do the establishing shot on an episode. Yeah. 
there was a window on the uh, left side of the house that doesn't exist. They hung a mock-up window there. And even sometimes at night it was lit up too, but they're like, there's no window there. So they decided the property brothers cut a new window and they're like, there's a real window here now. And it was kind of silly, but (laughs) (laughs) you know, I like when they, whenever they reference, you know, Alice or, you know, mom, or what is it? Uh, Carol and Mike Brady. Brady, And uh, they mimicked, like, when you walk in the front doors. That Like, the first episode, they only did the living room. And then the next episode, they're probably going to do the bedrooms and then yeah. et cetera. So, you know, they're stretching this shit out. <laughs> but I thought it was fun in a cheesy way. They made me kind of, like, embarrassed that I was watching it every time they could. You know, like, hey, we're going to embarrass you. And they asked these trivia questions. And I was like, hell, I have no idea. And I thought I knew stuff about you knew the, the Brady's. Brady's. Yeah. Like, it was like, hey, uh, one time the Brady's were on a soap commercial for a detergent. What was the name of that detergent? And I was like, yikes, I don't know. And it was Safe Detergent. I was like, that's a shitty name. How could I retain that? I remember I, I remember that stick around that, one time that Peter worked for uh, Leaning Tower Pizza. I can remember that. Because that's something that's unique. Are they going to make Tiger's Doghouse in the back? <laughs> yeah, I think they are. <laughs> They're gonna gonna mimic the driveway and stuff. Well, what's funny is that they showed here's what you're gonna see on this season, or and one of them was like, "Do you guys remember this cast member?" And they were like, "Oh!" And I was like, "Oh, please be cousin Oliver." Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, that'd be hilarious. That'd be wicked awesome. Okay, Stephen Beach nine hundred two and zero. The final episode came on. I'm not gonna spoil anything too much here. No revelations. No uh, uh, cliffhangers. I'm not going to spoil any of that. Did you like seeing the Jamie Walters stuff? Yes, that when you was watched hilarious. <laughs> this, the way this episode begins, you know, every episode begins with a dream sequence. Mm-hmm. And this one began with Steve Sanders going back in time and visiting Steve Sanders from the past. And they gave him the kind of, you know how he had the really curly hair and like this tiny mullet? Yeah. He had really bad hair in the first season. He goes to talk to his younger self about the way he dresses in his hair, and it's kind of funny. And then there's a part where they show the pilot to uh, test test screenings for uh, their pilot, and they have all the information. And they ask uh, Emily Valentine if they could see the information. She's like, no, 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 no. This will not be useful. You guys don't need to see this stuff. It'll basically haunt you. (laughs) And Tori Spelling's like, I've got to see this. So she finds a way to get it and she sends it to everybody. And there's a sequence where they're all reading the feedback. And I thought that was kind of funny. So let's check it out, Steven. Sure. Hello, Steve. Gone through a lot of trouble to get here. In fact, I've jumped through time to give you some very important advice. I know that's weird. I'm sorry. But you got to cut that hair. It's got to go. Having a mullet is no way to go through life. Two, <laughs> belly shirts, midriff shirts, anything like that, burn them. You find them in your closet, get rid of them. Never, ever wear them again. Three, perhaps the most important thing of all, the legacy key. You never paid it forward. Now's the time, Steve. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Is this getting through? I'm talking about your legacy. The legacy? Our legacy. Tori Spelling is polarizing, but as Donna Martin, she is completely endearing, especially when she is with David Silver. Polarizing. Audiences related to Kelly Taylor's struggle as a middle-aged woman, but found her storyline depressing. Middle-aged? Depressing? Steve Sanders' macho swagger feels old school like being in a time capsule. Time capsule? Andrea Zuckerman being gay or bi is pretty funny. Funny? Funny. Audiences think David Silver is now improbably sexy. Improbably? Really? Audiences loved seeing Brandon Walsh and Kelly Taylor together, but were confused by the sexual chemistry between... <laughs> Are you kidding me? Confused by the sexual chemistry between Brandon Walsh and Brenda Walsh? Oh, well, that's just wrong. And they would <laughs> like to see Brenda be more of a troublemaker. Ah! Oh, my God, good luck with that. Brenda wasn't a troublemaker. Kelly was. Kelly was a slut. <laughs> and they have this funny bit where they talk about 
a rap party where they all three wore red dresses and there was this huge fight and like cast members <laughs> were hiding because of it. And I wonder when they reference stuff like that, if it's ba- a little bit of it's based on the truth or it was just right. something. Uh, the funny thing there is uh, Brenda or Shannon Doherty has a dream sequence where she wakes up in bed next to Brandon, but it's done in the pillar box. Like it's back when the show the was TV. on, it looks <clears throat> like it was the old nine Oh two and Oh, and she's like, I don't care if this is wrong. And they start kissing and she's like, Oh, like she wakes up like, Oh, <laughs> like she's gross. Out by it. So it was, her, uh, basically Brandon making out with the sister. It was pretty funny. Twin sister. I think it's funny that the show, they, I think it's great that they have senses of humor about it. Yeah. That's the thing I like about the show. I think it's fun. I really didn't expect it to be like that. I figured we would be kind of like, a little cringy, you know, yeah. whatever. But I think it's fun. They're having fun with it. Because um, you're not actually seeing the show that they're making. You're seeing yeah. the behind-the-scenes show that they're supposedly making. Yeah, and I think it's fun. Hopefully it comes back. I don't know how well it did in the ratings, but I thought it was fun. They should bring that stuff back. Now, Stephen, I did not have time. I was very crunched for time this week. I didn't get to make a below-deck clip. No. Damn it. It was so good because uh, the captain, Captain Sandy, finds out how much that uh, Travis has been drinking because he's kind of acting like a dick. He's all hung over and tired and stuff. And, you know, they call from the, the kitchen. What do they call it on the boat? It's not the, the kitchen. Galley. The galley that like, hey, can you come take out the trash? He's like, uh, yeah, we're really busy. We don't have time. You know, we have priorities. And the captain goes, Go in there and get the trash right now. You're starting to piss me off. He's like, all right, Captain. <laughs> and he goes in there and he does it. And she's like, hey, what's your deal? And he's like, oh, no, I'm just really tired. You know, I'm kind of over it. She goes, I've heard about your drinking. It's like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, what's this going to be about? And she's like, come in here. I want to talk to you. And he's like, okay. She's like, I'm an alcoholic. And he's like, huh? She's like, I was a heavy drinker. Like, I've even been incarcerated, drunk in public. And he's like, oh, my God. She's like, I haven't had a drink, though, for 35 years. I got my shit together. You need to get your shit together. Because you know what? It's not doing anything for you. It's making your life worse. And the way you feel right now, you're going to keep feeling that way. It's never going to get better. And he's like, oh. She's like, so I just wanted to tell you that. Life gets better, but you don't necessarily need alcohol. And he's like, okay, thanks, Captain. And he's just like. I thought that conversation was going to piss me off, but it actually made me feel better. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Kind of a real moment from the captain. Yeah. She's just like, I'm an alcoholic. And he's like, huh? I can't really fault you, but you need to step it up. He's like, well, I think I might try drinking less. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> she. Oh, another thing she said, stop drinking for 30 days. Give your liver a break. It probably needs it. And he just kind of laughs. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so Steven, that is our shows this week. I'm sorry. I didn't have a clip of below deck. Cause I know that Adam Sexton was really looking forward to that, but what do you say? He's secretly watching it. You know, <laughs> let's do some news. It's too early to take a break. What do you say? Sure. Let's do it. Um, yes, the news. Now, Stephen, are you a fan of Alexander Skarsgård? Sure. He's the jam in my jelly roll. Oh, oh yes, he is. Hi, hey, Skinny. Stephen, Alexander Skarsgård to play Big Bad in CBS's All Access Adaptation. <laughs> adaptation <laughs> of The Stand. Do you know what that is? It's, I think it's... Uh... Uh, it was a it was a movie before, right? Yes. Okay, and they're going to remake the movie. <laughs> Another member. It was a TV move series. Right. Mm-hmm. Another member of the Skarsgård family is joining the Stephen King universe. Big Little Lies and True Blood alum Alexander Skarsgård has boarded the stand. Skarsgård will play the villainous Randall Flagg, a demonic figure who has popped up in several of King's books, also known as the Dark Man. 
He's he's the walking dude. The mm-hmm. dark man is Peyton Westlake, all right? <laughs> Flag tries to construct a new civilization after the world is decimated by a plague. He's also a major adversary of Mother Abigail, a 108-year-old prophet played by Whoopi, Whoopi. Goldberg. Steven, oh, Whoopi. The, the Whoopi. Woohoo! Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. By the way, Steven... <laughs> It is Adam Sexton's birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. That's so confusing. <laughs> Happy birthday, Adam. Like Mother Abigail, Flag appears in Plague Survivor's Dreams, but unlike her divine message, hey, we saw the miniseries, all right? We don't have to read the book or nothing. Um, CBS All Access adaptation will span nine episodes with King on board to write the final installment because everyone agrees the ending sucked, right? The giant hand of God comes down and crushes the nuclear warhead. I thought it just touched it and set it off or whatever. I thought it like goes or something like that. It was bad. The effects were bad. (laughs) Everything was bad. My dad paid 50 bucks for those effects. Yeah. My dad blames Stephen King for that. And he'll never read a Stephen King book for the rest of his life because of that. Remember me telling you that? No. I don't remember that. What what has one got to do with the other? Yeah, I was telling him whenever I was reading some Stephen King book, and he goes, I'll never trust Stephen King because I watched every hour of that miniseries, and the ending was so bad. And I was like, that was a miniseries. It was on TV. It had nothing to do with the, you know, the, the book, book, prose literature, you know, the reading the words. <laughs> yeah. And so, anyway. Also, uh, season two of Hulu's Castle Rock comes back soon, Stephen. And Mr. Mercedes started last night. How was that? I haven't seen this season yet. I mean, I've I watched the first two seasons, which is Mr. Mercedes, um, Finders Keepers, and this one's going to be End of Watch, I believe. Mm. So it's it, each one is based on each season was based on the book. Now, Steven, but they're they're keeping it all Mr. Mercedes, so people don't get confused. Right. I guess. The cast also includes James Marsden, Amber Heard, Daniel Sunjata, Jovan Adepo. Owen Teague, Brad William Hinkey, Henry Zaga, and Odessa Young. So pretty exciting, huh? That's going to be on CBS All Access. I hope it doesn't suck. And also, Stephen King's new book, The Institute, came out. That's right. So if you're interested. Um, maybe eventually. <laughs> Stephen. Well, I'll go pick it up, the book, regardless of reading it now or later. But Here's a clickbait article about Jason Momoa's new series. Did you watch the trailer to this? No, I haven't. I've okay. been waiting for this with you. I have so, so many questions about this. Okay, <laughs> Jason Momoa apparently thinks Apple TV Plus show C is better than Game of Thrones. Clickbaity, right? Yes. Got you to click on it. Let's watch this trailer to C S E E on Apple Plus's streaming service. Oh, they even have a teaser, Stephen. The moment has come. They did say this show was $15 million per episode they spent. I mean, it's gorgeous, right? Centuries from now, almost all humans have lost the ability to see. Some say sight was taken from them by God. Then why do they still have eyes? For the few who remain, so they can't see their blind Stephen. But after so many years, the power of sight has returned. What is it? Something's different. How do you it's know you're blind? They have the ability to see. How do you know you're blind? How does he know they can see their babies? They don't say, "Hey, I can see." Children. They have a power that we would call magical or evil. We huh? must protect them. For I mean, it does look gorgeous. We feared this day would come. The evil of light once almost destroyed the world. And now it has returned. Find the children who can see. How do you know? Exactly. How? You're blind. How are you going to find them? You're all blind. <laughs> Now, they will come for us. If we give the babies, they might leave us alone. No, 
I stand with Bubba Boss. How will you give them the baby so you don't know what direction they're in? <laughs> where are you riding those horses towards? You don't know where you're going. You're blind. How did they make the bridge going across? That will begin a new world. <laughs> I have more questions. We are family. All this does is we raise are questions. One. We fight as one. Where are you gonna shoot? Why are you wearing war paint as a blind person? Your adversary cannot <laughs> see the war paint. <laughs> Don't you wear war paint to be afraid? Yeah, it's enemy? a great fear. Keep you safe. It's like, hey, what are you wearing? War paint. Oh, I bet it's scary too, and I can't see shit. It's astonishing how the smallest moment can change an entire world. So there'd be really no. November 1st on Apple TV Plus, Stephen. Stephen, what do you think of that trailer? <laughs> well, I'm looking at all the buildings. Okay, how do they do that? The bridge but that spans a gay. giant I mean, river. He's gay. Excuse me, he's blind. Yes, he's blind. <laughs> so the bridge that spans a giant river. How do they make that? I don't know. They By feel? You know, just, okay, I mean... How, wait, That's how do I get across? Sick. I can't see anything. How do they know where to anchor that it how is? How do they the... know where to walk on the bridge? Do you hear a few people go, ah! Yeah. And they're like, okay, don't go that direction. Ah! Don't go over there. Okay, the bridge must be right here. Oh, there, I found the rope. <laughs> There's so much when I watch the trailer, I'm like... <laughs> the war paint is hilarious. That's yeah, hilarious. Yeah, you're wearing war paint and everyone's blind, yeah. including the people you're fighting are blind. Is there a lot of hitting, <laughs> hitting trees and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. like, huh, it's... Oh, oh, you just hit me, dumbass. Oh, sorry, sorry. You know, I can't see. You know, we're all blind. It doesn't make any sense. Ah. You need a clip of uh, the David Letterman. Them bats is smart. <laughs> they remember use radar, the- <laughs> yeah. I don't get They've it, They've got Steven. sonar built into them now. Let it explode in a blinding flash of destruction. Now, don't you agree that the show looks gorgeous, though? It looks good. The story is a little... Uh, like, why would you even want to make that show? Like, hey, here's a show where everyone's blind. It's like, how about... No. Let's do something like, else. Well, I wouldn't. Mind, I don't mind that, but the way things are progress is like, how do you know two infants can see? Yeah, like, hey, there's something different about these babies. It can he, see. He can see. How do you know he can how see? How do you know? Just feels like it. Just feels like it. I got a feeling. Like, like where, what do you use for the baby's diapers? You can't see where the diaper is. So you go, oh, poop, found it. <laughs> now, another thing, Stephen, if the first episode ends and everyone can see again, and then the rest of the show has nothing to do with that, would it be better? Like, hey, we can all see again. But the show's called See. <laughs> they well, wrap the whole concept around this. Yeah. Um, well, no, is that the concept is... Now it can change to see because they are, people are starting to see again. Are people starting to see again? Well, are allegedly. The, are the babies? The, oh, maybe the, the babies, babies are, are the contagious. First... They're like spreading. And that one lady's like, no, they're bringing the light back in. We all need to stay in the dark. It's just like, shut up. Like anybody would choose not to see again. <laughs> Like, hey, we're going to kill the babies. All right, let's start heading in a direction. And hopefully the baby's in that direction. We have no idea because we're friggin' blind. It doesn't... I don't understand. It can smell terrific. Oh, what do you want to hear, man? <laughs> what if they all had the entire world lost their sense of smell? It's like, oh. Mm. Like, nothing tastes good. Everything's just kind of, you know, plain. It's so boring. That would be a good show. Spend $15 million per episode on that. Taste. Taste, yeah. <laughs> Steven, there's a new Watchman trailer. Do you remember Watchman? I do. <laughs> the guy who builds watches. Watchman, the movie. Watchman, new trailer hints at vast and insidious conspiracy. Shows Regina King in masked badass mode. All right clickbait bastards you got me to click on this war is brewing in the latest trailer for hbo's Watchmen. so we're going to get this out of the way early we're on whatever side regina king's angela plays for <laughs> the if the reasoning put forth at the beginning of the clip is to be believed angela is driven by trauma obsessed with justice and has experienced grievous justice in her injustice in her <coughs> lifetime but that doesn't stop her from donning a mask and is it donning a mask donning. 
she's not doning Mm-mm. a mask kicking down doors in pursuit of good. Even if that means, as she informs Don Johnson's police chief, Sonny Crockett, get a little rough. Oh, wait, he plays himself Ooh, from the nice. from Miami Vice in this. There's a guy in my trunk, she says, feet kicked up on a desk. Oh, wait, they're describing the trailer. How about we just watch the trailer, Stephen? I don't need this okay. chucklehead to describe the trailer. Yeah. What's the whole deal down there? Describing the trailer. I know. They're driven by trauma. They're obsessed with justice because of some injustice they suffered. Ergo, the mask. It hides the pain. I wear the mask to protect myself. Right. From the pain. HBO presents. involved shooting last night. Watch, man. You gonna give me the speech now? What speech? I should calm down, take a breath before we're at war again. No. There's a guy in my trunk. Delightful. Hey, they told us about this scene. Mm-hmm. Their legs are on the desk and everything. You know why you're here? Some gun kicked in my door and put me in the trunk of our fucking car. What the hell? Hey! That is correct. I don't want my lawyer. Yeah, we don't have to do that with terrorists. Why would they start this shit up again? Maybe there was something that they didn't want found. They had a mission. It's only just begun. Is this going to be any good, Steve? Cavalry yeah, has our names and addresses. Just run and scare. Are we safe, Angela? Are you He's curious about it? I'm curious. Sounds like the vast and insidious conspiracy. I like Tim. Tim. I'm a torture bug. Oh, yeah. Uh, My head would explode. Three names. Tim Blake Nelson. Yes. What is this? This. It's the only way to show you the truth. We need to help stop the Seventh Cavalry. From doing what? Those fuckers are trying to start a war. Well, it looks like you got things under control. Is that the owl ship? It looks right. Cool costume. Thanks. So it's not the Watchmen. It's, it's like a continuation of. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, Stephen. Another story. Uh, this one I thought was funny because uh, it's a clickbait article on Tech Radar. The Witcher TV series release date may just have been leaked by Netflix. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's probably safe to say that Netflix's upcoming adaptation of the Witcher fantasy series starring Henry Cavill is one of the most anticipated shows in the service's history. Whoa. That's some hyperbole, isn't it? While the streaming service dropped a magnificent, <laughs> magnificent, magnificent, magnificent first trailer for the witcher series at comic-con back in july it's since stayed quiet regarding the show's potential release date until now initially no. spotted by another website it appears that netflix netherlands social media account accidentally let the cat out of the bag <laughs> in a tweet that's since been deleted revealing details on the Witcher's release window alongside a number of shows. Luckily, the site was able to take a screenshot before it was scrapped. It said, the wait is almost over. So many nights s- sleep for these titles. Uh, like, for instance, Peaky Blinders Season 5 is in 23 days. El Camino, the Breaking Bad movie, 30 days. Toon Season 1, 37 days. What the hell's that? Oh, Atypical wow. Season 3, 51 days. The Crown, 67 days. The Witcher, 97 days. In counting the number of sleeps until its new content arrives, Netflix's tweet revealed that The Witcher is only 97 sleeps away. If that tweet was indeed accurate, that would mean The Witcher would land on December 17th. Of course, the account was quick to delete the tweet, meaning the release date is far from set in stone. Now, here's all I want to, all I know. If that's true... I have plenty of time to finish this book and then the fourth book and maybe the fifth book before the series. If you're tearing through them like this, yeah. Yeah. 
so I'm hoping to at least uh, finish. But you don't know how far the first season's going to go. How many? Oh books yeah, it's are, probably going to yeah. go. It, it's probably going to cover like maybe. I, I can. Well, see, it depends on how many seasons it is. Is it just going to be one? This it's is one like, season. It's eight episodes, I believe, is what people are speculating. And I can tell from the teaser trailer, like it's covered some of the short stories. Like you can see it happening right. in the trailer. I think it also covers. A uh, blood of elves because I see some blood of elves definitely in the trailer. So I'm thinking that uh, the first three books probably because the first the short stories deal you know so much with mostly Geralt, but if you include these other uh, like this book and maybe some other books, you can spread it around and cut to other characters that aren't introduced until the the first novel or the second novel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't necessarily have to read all of the books. There's eight in all uh, before the series if comes you get out. close to halfway, there's no way they're going to get through half of the books. Yeah. If it, if it becomes as popular as they think it will, then, then they need more material to keep going. Oh, right? definitely. And they have plenty, too. So is, is, is the Witcher series over, or has he continued to write? You know? From what I've heard, the last book, he finished the storyline, the novels, and then he released a prequel book. So, I don't know. He could always go back and do another prequel or continue. But, I mean, does I the current book eight, I guess, if you will, have an ending? Oh, uh, well, Like, it, it's like, the Geralt eighth, dies, or... The eighth book is the prequel book, so it would be the seventh. And seventh. I don't know how it ends, so I don't yeah. know. We'll see. You know, I'll eventually get there. <laughs> Stephen, what do you say we take a break and then when we come back, we do some DVD videos? Sure. All right, guys. We'll be right back after how long, Stephen? Ten minutes. That's right. Ten minutes. I never felt so bad in my entire life. At Hardee's, we don't use just any old fish for our fish sandwich. No, 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 no. To win you over, we go to the icy depths of the North Atlantic for whole fillets of moist, flaky fish on a multi-grain bun. All because we never forget you can always go someplace else. Next time you're in the neighborhood... <laughs> Why not drop in? Now get a fisherman's fillet sandwich and regular fries for only one ninety nine at Hardee's. Love Connection, weekdays at 3.30. When it's time to sell your home, you want action. And that's what you get with the Century 21 Action Warranty. My personal promise of service, in writing. The Century 21 Action Warranty. One more reason to come with us. For complete details, call a participating office. Come with us. Here you go. You really know how to impress your clients, huh? I mean, who needs conference rooms when you can have this kind of togetherness? Who is this guy? Hey, what are you guys doing? Training for submarine duty? Who are you? You should have stayed at Holiday Inn. They have everything you need for a perfect meeting, and they'll guarantee it. Or stay here, lose the account, your job, your house, your car, your dog. Check out 10 minutes. Why take chances? Stay with someone you know. Holiday Inn. Get ready for a new eye drop so refreshing you won't believe your eyes. Wow. Introducing new Visine Extra. Like regular Visine, it gets the red out, but it also gives you an extra medication that cools, soothes, moisturizes, and protects dry, irritated eyes. For an extra medication in a formula found in no other eye drop, get new Visine Extra. So refreshing you won't believe your eyes. Chesapeake Bay Retrievers love the water. Patsy Barber, top breeder of champion Chesapeake Bay Retrievers. The most important thing is to, is to produce a good, sound dog and a healthy dog. If you want them in excellent condition, you just have to give them the best food. My dogs love pedigree meat. Mixing the pedigree meal time with the pedigree is really excellent for the dogs. It makes them healthy. It makes them happy. It gives my dogs everything they need. Look at this guy right here. He's as solid as a rock. Pedigree and pedigree meal time. Recommended by top breeders. Monday, it's the wildest Alp ever. When he bugs the place, whoa, whoa. you'll see a rancher. It's an ant farm. Go fetch. A romancer. Come on, you love bugs. And a dancer. There are ants everywhere. Hey. In a story that's an entrancer. Bugs under glass. On how, followed by an all-new Hogan family, Monday. Everybody knows that milk's for babies. Charming, disarming, whatever they do. Everybody knows that. Baby, milk's for you. It's a healthy cake, baby. 
one mess. My daughter left a lipstick in her pocket, and before I even noticed, I washed it. I had to try something, so I grabbed Liquid Tide. Guess what? Not one mark of the lipstick remained. Thanks, Mrs. Judy Davis. Can your Liquid Get Out melted lipstick? Liquid Tide did. You'll be surprised at the things Liquid Tide gets out. Surprise yourself. I still can't believe how amazing you are. So sweet dreams, little Katie. And sweet dreams for me, too. Because I'm about to have something so rich, so creamy. General Foods International Coffee's Cafe Vienna with the spicy sweetness of cinnamon. Unlike anything else, turning quiet time into a quiet celebration. Celebrate the moments of your life. With General Foods International Coffee's. It's too hot and too early to sleep. The neighbor's dog won't quit barking. And you've got the rerun blues. So you might as well turn to CBS, because you're not going to believe it. Bob Barker and the Price is Right will spin and flash those primetime blues away Thursday nights. He's an exceptional hero. You don't measure a person by their height. It's the size of their heart that really matters. They call him the wizard. He's a toy maker and something more. He's also the inventive genius of our time. Whose technical wizardry proves... Anything can happen. Share the spirit of adventure. The Wizard, coming soon to CBS. Wonderful. Pizza is a real single man's delicacy because you can call up, pick it up on your way home. There's no commitment. Take it home and eat it in your underwear. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that, does it, guys? During August, when you come to Pizza Hut for delicious pizza, you can also get a coupon worth 10% off your next Anthony's credit card purchase. And it's just in time for back to school from Anthony's and Pizza Hut. State law prohibits availability at Kansas Pizza Hut restaurants. All over America, you'll find kids playing with things and in things that came from Kmart, where more people, parents included, shop than any other store. For summer things like Tonka toys and McGregor shoes. And, of course, when it's time for things for back to school. America's favorite store. Kmart, the saving place. Hamburger places may be good at making hamburgers, but when they try to make chicken, it doesn't always fly. That's why I count on the chicken experts, Kentucky Fried Chicken. The Colonel's secret recipe makes their chicken tender, juicy, and downright delicious. Things are licking good. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, all we do is chicken, so we do it right. Those burger places are only fooling themselves. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Who has more four-eye protection than close-up? Nobody. This is Joey. Hey, how you doing? Still got those popsicle ice pops? A genuine article. Cherry, right? Going home. Right. Going home. Me and Luchansky must have had a thousand of these sitting right here. Going home. You having a good time? Yeah. Yeah. Memories begin with genuine popsicle, fudsicle, and creamsicle brand pops. It was fun. If you like strawberry shortcake, you love the strawberry shortcake sundae we make at Brahms. We start with Brahms fresh pound cake and two big dips of Brahms real vanilla ice cream. Then we ladle on delicious strawberry topping, add whipped cream and a cherry. The strawberry shortcake sundae from Brahms. You'll like it. That cool, refreshing feeling of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum Puts a sparkle in your eye, a spring in your step And makes things lots of fun It's that little lift, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum It's that little lift, come on and get you 
sun. That clean, fresh taste Wrigley Spearmint's got. That little lift that means a lot. Ah, uh, that's Jenny. But that's not Jenny's dad. If she gets into that car, that may be the last time you'll see Jenny. I'm McGruff, the crime dog. See those kids? Every day in this country, 60 kids disappear. Some run away, but a lot are kidnapped by strangers. Or even by people they know. So write to McGruff and teach your kids to protect themselves. Help uh, take a bite out of crime. The Sega Genesis has blast processing. Super Nintendo doesn't. So what's blast processing do? And uh, what if you don't have blast processing? Here's Ronald McDonald. It's a good time for fun with McNuggets. That's us! How do McNuggets visit outer space? In flying saucers. <laughs> if Chicken McNuggets played music, what would it be? Chunk rock. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's McNuggets. Are you kidding me? Yeah, gross. Shut my mouth. Hey, everybody, we're back. We're back from the break. It was only 10 minutes. Did you time us? I told you we'd be back. Oh, well, that's just wrong. No, it wasn't. It was 10 minutes, right, Stephen? Come on. It's about 10, yeah. Stephen! You did it, so... What do you say we do some DVDs? Do oh, what do you want to hear, man? Some DVDs? Let's do it! Ow! Let's do some DVDs! Let's do some DVDs! Let's do some DVDs! 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 DVDs, HD, Blu-ray, standard definition! DVDs! Oh, hell yes, the DVDs, everyone! Shut up! Yes and no! Uh, yes, 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 DVDs. We have to add 4K into that one now. Yeah, I know. How do we... Uh, we're going to have to change up the lyrics someday, K, Stephen. 8 k standard definition. <laughs> All right, Stephen, DVD Blu-rays for September 17th, 2019. This Tuesday coming up is the movie Bodied. If you see only one rap battle dramedy this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I want to see then. Oh, God. Oh, sorry. I couldn't not laugh. If you only see one rap battle movie this year, Stephen... It may as well be bodied. The well-reviewed Eminem-produced film is the third and best feature from noted music video director Joseph Kahn and follows a student who enters the field of competitive battle rap. After first debuting on the festival circuit in 2017, the film finally makes its way on disc in I September. I completely forgotten about shortly after. Mm-hmm. I have a clip, Steven. Sure. Here's a rap battle. The Mulberry Boys, every Friday night. On the show, this guy better won know rap keep it tight. Right. ETL is back in the J-Strim's in the zone. Introduce the co-host, he doesn't do it alone. PCZ is about to hold court. You know he's on the headset, you can hear him snort. Pop culture movies, TV shows and games. Rotten Tomatoes reviews news and Blu-rays. Foggy don't play around, he will bust a drop fast. Welcome to the Entertainment Landfill Podcast. The Jason uh, yeah. and Steven I'm totally Show. Much body. It's the Jason and Steven Show. <laughs> what? what? The Jason and Steven Show. It's the Jason and Steven Show. Yeah. And it, what's cool is Adam beat this guy in the rap battle. <laughs> 
Monday through Fridays is when they rule the late night. <laughs> on the scene of the TV screen, they keep it tight. 9 p.m. is when you catch the Montel show. 10 p.m. is when Maury Paul gives you more. So turn it on. Tune in to talk show heaven. K D L I Channel 27. Montel and Maury, they the baddest compilation. Keep your ears and eyes locked to this TV station. The Montel and Maury show. It's the Montel and Maury show. What? It's the Montel and Maury show. It's the Montel and Maury all right next blu-ray is dark phoenix that's right everyone heard the movie sucked and you didn't go see it in the theaters well it's not exactly the best x-men movie in fact it's nearly the worst only wolverine has scored lower among the 12 x-men films and none has performed as poorly at the box office Dark Phoenix serves as a, the directorial debut for writer-producer Simon Kinberg. Let's see if he gets another film after this. <laughs> who wrote the screenplays for several of the previous films in the series, including Apocalypse, for which this serves as a direct sequel. James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, Nicholas Holt, and Sophie Turner head the cast. Do you have any desire to ever watch this? If it comes on cable, I'll probably watch it. I mean, they, I, I'm not. There, there was no chance of buying this. No, they just said nothing. I we heard nothing good about it. Right. It's not a pay movie. Yeah. I, I would, uh, you know, like I said, if it comes on and I see it, I may try and watch it. I mean, it wasn't even like uh, you know some people may. It was just like, oh, it's bad. You know, I'm already paying for HBO. When it comes on there, I'll watch it. If it's bad, I can turn it. <laughs> now, Stephen, if you're a fan of Doctor Who, the Dark Doctor Who complete David Tennant collection comes out. <clears throat> I haven't seen any. How's that? Um, South Park um, seasons 11 through 15 and South Park seasons 16 through 20 all come out. Um, do you still watch South Park? Occasionally, I'll, I'll watch it. It's been on forever, hasn't yes. it? Yes, they're trying to come up with the Simpsons beat, you know. Supergirl Season 4, The Good Fight Season 3, Friends, The Complete Series 25th Anniversary Set, Good Lord, man. Elementary, The Complete Series. Wow, a lot of TV shows there. But do people still buy TV shows on disc? I well, guess some people do. I would do. say if you want to keep the set, because if you can't always watch it on whatever... Your platform is. Right. So, Stephen, I want to talk about what's streaming this week. That's okay. right. Unbelievable. The EMF story. Sorry. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> that's a wave. On Netflix, Unbelievable. Limited series <laughs> premiere starring Booksmart's Caitlin Deaver, United States of Terra's Tony Collette. Come on. She's been in more than just that. And Merritt Weaver from Nurse Jackie. A teen files a police report claiming that she was raped by a home intruder. Oh, man. It's going to be a drag. Isn't it? <laughs> but an investigation cast down on her story. I, Alan Seppenwall said this show is hard to watch, but it's really good. It's one of those. Like, oh, man, this is going to be tough. Because she's telling the truth. No one thinks she is, and they all treat her like shit kind of thing. And it's up to these two. It's based on a real... She sex, and she doesn't... Well, it's based on a a real story. I know, but... It's like a serial rapist that somehow can cover his tracks where uh, he doesn't leave any evidence. So that's going to be a depressing show to watch. Amazon Prime is undone. This genre-bending show, which applies rotoscope animation to live-action performances, centers on a young woman who is involved in a near-fatal accident that induces visions of her late father, played by Bob Odenkirk. The girl is played by Alita Battle Angel's Rosa Salazar. That sounds kind of cool. Rotoscope? I want to see what that looks like. Gotta watch the trailer. And on Netflix, The Chef Show. I actually watched a couple of episodes of this today. John Favreau and Chef Roy Choi return with even more celebrity guests, including Seth Rogen. I watched the episode that had uh, Dave Filoni, who worked on uh, works on the Star Wars series, The Clone Wars, and Star Wars Rebels and The Mandalorian. So I watched them make some food there. It's a fun show. Also on Netflix, The Ranch. Have you ever watched this? It's starring... Uh, I've seen a couple episodes. I haven't watched too much of it, though. Colt struggles to reconcile with Abby. Mary battles addiction. Luke returns to Denver and tries to make amends. This is starring um, Kelso. Because <laughs> I can't remember his name. 
God, I had it until you said Kelso. Kelso. <laughs> it's starring Kelso. Oh, jeez. What's his name? I... <sighs> also on Netflix, Top Boy. Season 3 premiere, Duchesne and Sully return to the streets and contend with a young, ruthless drug dealer named Jamie. Okay, Top Boy. The CW is going to have the EA Sports Madden NFL 20 Classic. 500 players battled out for a $190,000 prize pool. Damn, we should have played Madden, Steven. Mm-hmm. We just didn't give a shit. Ashton Kutcher. Oh, God. How did... That's so easy. How did we oh, not... <laughs> I mean, come on. Because you threw Kelso in. <laughs> Jessica said that uh, South Park has just been renewed for three more seasons. Wow. And let's see. What else? Uh... On HBO, Room 104, estranged siblings played by Luke Wilson and Christine Woods reunite at the site of a joint investment. Okay, that sounds exciting. And Killjoys in the series' penultimate episode, the trio scrambles to come up with a way to defeat the lady before her terraforming plans become reality. Are you still watching this? Yes. Are you caught up? Uh, No, 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 I'm not caught up. Uh, We're close. Heather and I uh, really liked the show, but we kind of fell behind. And I kept telling her, I wish there were like just individual episodes. This ongoing storyline drives me crazy. Like her twin is the bad guy. Yes. I was just like, oh, come on. When can this end? (laughs) (laughs) I just got tired of it. Well, Stephen, what do you say we read? What do you say, Stephen? (laughs) Hey, Stephen. Yes, sir. Let's read Rotten Tomatoes. Let's do it. (laughs) Let's read Rotten Tomatoes. But there's just one thing. No, there's... Well, I guess there's one tomato. No, there's multiple tomatoes, right? Tomatoes. Yes. Never actually existed. That's right. There's never been any tomatoes. Mind blown. You say either. I say either. You say neither. And I say neither. Either, either, and either, neither. Let's call the whole thing off. Yes, you like potato, and I like potato. You like tomato, I like tomato. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. I like stale tomato juice. (laughs) That's right, it sure does. The most incredible single potato yes smells like Mm. potato juice right Mm. what is potato juice (laughs) potato soup all right steven hustlers i talked about this earlier Mm -hmm. j-lo stripping what more could you want led by a career best performance from j-lo jennifer lopez why do i keep saying j-lo hustlers is a uniquely empowering heist drama with depth intelligence to match its striking visual appeal 87 percent Fresh. Uh, Jessica just said Ashton Kutcher. (laughs) (laughs) And, um... Greg Kinnear. The audience, what's weird is the uh, critics rate it higher than the audience, which is 75%. You know what that is? It's mostly men like, I'm not that much stripping in it. She wasn't naked in it. (laughs) Yeah, that's what it is. They're disappointed. Jennifer Lopez didn't take her clothes off. She wasn't naked, man. Knocks a bunch of (laughs) bullshit. Hustlers follow a crew of savvy former strip club employees who band. Oh, that's what it's like. Man, they quit the strip club like ten minutes into the movie. Man, <laughs> no, they're, they're not. They're dressed the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> they band together to turn the tables on their Wall Street clients. That's right. Starring Jennifer Lopez, Julia Stiles, Kiki Palmer, Lily Reinhardt, Mercedes Rule, Constance Wu. Let's see what our favorite reviewer, film critics, had to say about this. Helen O'Hara of Time Out said, This is a deeply feminist film, one where men are given less screen time than the cameoing Cardi B and Lizzo. Four out of five. Try to say that five times fast. Don't In- want to. Inku Kang of Slate says, An immediate entrant into the pantheon of female friendship movies, Hustlers, a pretty much perfect film, makes plain the hollowness of so many other iterations of girl power in studio projects you can feel its heartbeat why is it okay christy lemire of RogerEber.com says scafaria's film is always a blast to watch resulting in a surprising level of emotional depth three out of four 
Uh oh, Lindsay Barr Uh-oh. says the film is at its best when it's about the bond between the women, but it's a theme that doesn't hit home until far too late. Two point five out of four. That is rotten in my book, but in Stephen's book, it is average. <laughs> it's actually about two point five out of four. That's not rotten. That's fresh. Yeah. Adam Graham of Detroit News says Hustlers doesn't dig as deep into the particulars of its maneuvering as it could, but it leaves its mark as a forceful piece of girl power. Don't hate the players when the game's this much fun. (laughs) Pat on my back. I give it a B. All right. Ed Potton of the Times UK says, yet while it's superficially entertaining, the true life tale of lap dancers who drug their clients and maxed out their credit cards is like visiting a strip club Ultimately, a bit depressing. Two out of five. Michael Smith of Tulsa World says, Hustlers is less about these two women, these two women's relationship, than it is about the ensemble friendship. A wild story told. A killer soundtrack and a powerhouse performance by Lopez, who's always in control. Three out of four. Brad Keefe of Columbus Alive, Stephen, says Hustlers is a familiar rise and fall crime caper concept with some layers, and it manages to say a lot without being preachy. In fact, it's so consistently entertaining, funny and flashy, you might not even get some of the messages. Four out of five. Gary Walcott of the KXL FM Portland, Oregon, says the movie is so-so. However, J-Lo is yes, yes who's always been stuck in dumb rom-coms and boring dramas, gives the performance we have always believed she is capable of giving. I liked it. Okay, pervo, right? (laughs) Bill Waters of Aggressive Comics says, a solid cast led by a near career-high performance by Jennifer Lopez is a good character piece, but it isn't quite the film that the trailers... Have Oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. I thought there's be more stripping. That's what he's saying. He gives it a three out of five. Jazz Ting, Ting K says, Hustler's sexy grade A thriller that dances with danger gambling to win a hot ticket to neon nightlife. <laughs> what? Oh, that's a run on sentence there. Do you know what it means? It took two people to write this next one, Stephen. Oh. Linda and Al Lerner of Movies and Shakers. Get it? Movies and Shakers? Is that clever? No. This is a film. This is a film centric production that manages to be sexy yet never exploitative. Jennifer Lopez still plays the girl from the Bronx, but it's surprising as a savvy, greedy, conniving yet nurturing presence. Oh, okay. It's as cringy as the Brady Bunch song. <laughs> Carla Renata says, multicultural A-plus cast of strong women who take a page from the good fella gangsters of Wall Street beat them at beat them at their own game, becoming millionaires. Jennifer Lopez dazzles, and Lorraine Scafaria's direction makes these women looks, look like heroes, not victims. Tom Standstill, Tom San, Santill, Tom said, it's a movie about figuring out how the world works and getting in on the game. A minus. All right. Not enough information there, Tom. Uh, Ross Raihala says, Hustlers is going to leave a whole lot of people smiling while pondering some of the deeper truths about life the film reveals. Oh, that sounds deep, man. (laughs) Edwin Arnauden of Asheville Movie says, comparisons to Scorsese, let's be nice, are, say, unfounded, two out of five. Well, I didn't hear anybody compare it to Scorsese so far. <laughs> Just this guy, I guess. <clears throat> Brent Hankins of The Lamblight says, Hustlers may be a sexy crime thriller, but it's also a film about women banding together to take on a system that frequently treats them as less than, turning the tables on those who hold all the cards and having a damn good time doing it. Scrumptious, 8 out of 10. Oh, he loved it. Um, Linda Malay says underneath the glitter and sex appeal there's a real substance and that's what makes it that's and that's what makes it amore steven not when the moon hits all right steven the goldfinch have you heard about this movie based on the pulitzer pulitzer you say pulitzer or pulitzer pulitzer based on the pulitzer prize winning book the goldfinch 25% rotten. What? Uh-huh. 
Beautifully filmed, yet mostly inert, the goldfinch mishandles its source material, flattening a complex narrative into a largely uninvolving disappointment. 75% audience score. Let's see what they say. The Goldfinch is the film adaptation of Donna Tartt's globally acclaimed bestseller of the same name, which won in 2014 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, beating out several other books. Uh, is that how it works, Stephen? No, yes. I'm just kidding. Uh, and spent her, more than her book beat up the other people. <laughs> it's a bully. It spent more than 30 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. Theodore Theo Decker was a 13-year-old when his mother was killed in a bombing at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. The tragedy changes the course of his life, sending him on a stirring odyssey of grief and guilt, reinvention and redemption, and even love. The through it all, he holds on to one tangible piece of hope from that terrible day. A painting of a tiny bird chained to its perch. The goldfinch. Spoiler, it might have been like one of those uh, rosebud type of things, Stephen. I thought it was one of those 3D posters. from. Oh, yeah. It's a of... sailboat. <clears throat> it's a schooner. <laughs> <laughs> Are you watching this shit, man? It's fucked up. All right. Starring Ansel Elgort, Finn Wolfhard, Ashley Cummings, Willa Fitzgerald, and uh, Sarah Paulson, Luke Wilson, Jeffrey Wright, Nicole Kidman, Dennis O'Hare. Steven is too many. I'm going. I'm Jeffrey getting out of Ryan breath. A He's a great actor. I like and Joey Slotnick. Hey, the single guy's friend. Oh. I like <laughs> Joey Slotnick. He's great. I mean, what else has that guy been in? Oh, what do you want to hear, man? I want to hear <laughs> something other than the single guy. Stephanie Zacharek <laughs> of Time Magazine said, it's an object lesson in what not to do in an adaptation. Yet, it's occasionally effective enough that you can see a, a, a much more successful movie buried within it. Steve Pond of The Rap says the film grows more florid and dramatic as it unfolds and more disjointed. Even with reliable actors like Elgort, Wright, Nicole Kidman, Sarah Paulson, and Luke Wilson on hand, the storytelling feels clunky in a way Brooklyn never did. Brian Lowry of CNN says... The movie represents a transparent bid to bring the book's prestige to the screen, but it's another case of literary underpinnings being lost in translation. Is that the second person that said that? Uh, Matthew Lacona. Hey, Matthew Lacona, hey. Stephen. San Diego reader. He says, there are ideas at work here about providence and salvation, or at least there are secular counterparts <laughs> about civilization and the worthwhile work of preserving it. And about defining moments and our response to them. But there isn't much of a movie. One out of five. Oh, man, Steven. <laughs> Lindsay Barr of the Associated Press says the goldfinch is stoic and sad, occasionally brilliant, and more often just confusing. Two out, 2.5 out of four, the worst movie ever made. Oh, okay. Oh. Adam Graham of Detroit News says, hey, this guy reviewed uh, the other movie, mm -hmm. Hustler. For a work inspired by a classic painting, this dense mishmash of genres and styles is as lifeless as a photocopy. I give it a C. Okay. Wait, I thought it was based on a book, not a painting. <laughs> I know. He has no idea what he's reviewing, does he? I don't think he does. Caillou Pettis, a battle royale with cheese, says... While the cast is great and has terrific cinematography by Roger Deakins, The Goldfinch is a disappointingly, boringly, slow and uninspired film. Wow, that's not good. Jiva Lang says that what was director John Crowley thinking when he set about for faithfully duplicating all of Tart's same mistakes? I don't know. What was he thinking? Linda, now learner of Movies and Shankers. Stephen, is that a good name for a website? No. <laughs> this, Still not clever. <laughs> Still not clever. <laughs> this film is a long, flawed piece of art, but it still manages to hold attention despite the poignant performances from young and older al actors alike. Piecing it together becomes somewhat of a tiresome exercise by the end. Pamela Powell of Daily Journal says, The Goldfinch bites off more than it can chew, as it spins in circles, uncertain as to what direction to take. One out of four. Leonard Malton says, oh, I love Leonard Malton, Stephen. You know he's going to love it, right? Yes. And what a lot of fun. I don't know why critics in Toronto attacked this film the way they did. It's not perfect, to be sure, but it's not bad. 
by any means. I give it 15,000 stars. Wow. He liked it. Incidentally, he's terrific. Who is? Me? Leonard Moulton. He's the jam in my jelly roll. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Matt Rodriguez of Shakefire says, The goldfinch is like watching a puzzle be put together, but you have no idea what the finished picture is supposed to be. It's an uneven mess that struggles to say anything meaningful in any way. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. I give it a D. Oh, wow. Dang. He doesn't like it. Yeah. Oscar Goff says the characters speak in the stilted pretension manner of a Wes Anderson film, but without the remove that invites the audience to be amused. I think this guy's pretentious. What do mm-hmm. you think? Sandy Schaefer of Screen Rant says ambitious and undeniably gorgeous to look at. The Goldfinch is a sprawling mess that never finds the rhythm it needs to come alive as a film. Yikes. How do they get everything so wrong, Stephen? I thought it was. Did they read the book first? I know. I don't think so. Hmm. Or that maybe might they be were. A problem. T- you know, have you ever heard like they were too in love with a book? Like that's what the yeah. problem was. They try couldn't to, kill to, kill yeah. their darlings, as it were. <laughs> Richard Roper says Luke Wilson. Wait, did I already read his review, or was no, that the other movie? Linda Bolton. Richard Roper says, Luke Wilson and Sarah Paulson are wonderful actors, but they are stuck playing broad caricatures more suited to a particularly crass old episode of Two and a Half Men than a film with such lofty ambitions. What? Two out of four. Rex Reed said, Chaos Reigns, two out of four. He's just getting lazy as he gets old. (laughs) I know. Two word review. Ann Brody said, I'm haunted by it. And that's all she says. Hmm. That's more intriguing than Chaos Reigns. <laughs> I know. Robert Koger of Flickering Myth says, This is a terrible movie, only made tolerable due to the ensemble cast giving their best efforts. Good things assuredly can come from bad, but nothing good is coming from this adaptation of The Goldfinch. See you guys next week. All right. I guess he's got places to go. I assume. He's got things to do. Is Joey Slotnick going to be the best friend, a single guy or somebody? I hope so. That'd be great. I don't know about you, Stephen, but I want to go see Hustlers. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you would. You know, some people have already seen Ad (laughs) Ash. Perverts. Have you? I, I didn't know what Ad Astra was with Brad Pitt. I didn't mm. watch the trailer or anything. I was like, he's in some kind of space movie. Is it about like John Glenn or something? All of a sudden, he sees guys on moon buggies shooting guns at yeah. each other on the moon. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Ad Astra takes a visually thrilling journey through the vast reaches of space while charting an ambitious course for the heart of the bond between parent and child. Comes out September 20th, Stephen. Starring Brad Pitt, Tommy Lee Jones, Ruth Nega, Liv Tyler, Don Sutherland. I call him Don now. Lauren Dean. (laughs) And other people. Steven, here's what the film's about. Astronaut Roy McBride, strong name, travels to the outer edges of the solar system to find his missing father and unravel a mystery that threatens the survival of our planet. His journey will uncover secrets that challenge the nature of human existence, and he will get in gunfights on the moon. Mm. Hell yeah! I hope he does like a space jump with the buggy, you know, like over a crater. Yeah! I don't give us none of your bullshit stories, huh? Drama with the, when they do that and the, <laughs> the gators are in the crater with the helmets. <laughs> Let's see what David Sexton says about the London Evening Standard. Gravity... Interstellar or even First Man, this is not. Despite the contributions of cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoytema and composer Max Richter, three out of five, rotten. Andy's brother. Does this make any sense? Steven, three out of five, rotten. No. Doesn't make sense. Candace Frederick says, Brad Pitt. He's the jam in my jelly roll. Blurs the line between fear and precision so easily that it's a haunting experience. Justin Chang of the Los Angeles Times says, Somber, stirring, ridiculous, and just shy of sublime. (laughs) All right, you should be fired. David Ehrlich of IndieWire says, One of the most ruminative... Why isn't Google 
pronouncing it for me, Stephen. One of the most ruminative, withdrawn, and curiously optimistic space oddities this side of Solaris. And there's gunfighting on the moon. A. Wow. Mm. Stephanie Zacharek of Time Magazine. Hey, we read some of her other reviews. Ad Astra works, not least because nearly every minute of it is gorgeous to look at. Nicholas Barber of BBC.com says, Ad Astra is enjoyable as a two-fisted action movie and is hard sci-fi rumination, but weighed down as it is by emotional baggage, it doesn't quite get to the stars. Three out of five, which is the same as this review that was rotten, but now it's counted as fresh. No rhyme or reason, Stephen. Nope. Louisa Moore of Screen Zealot says, Highly intelligent, melancholy science fiction that will leave a lasting impression on those who can appreciate its sadness and beauty. Oh, what do you want to hear, man? John Wynn of Nerd Reactor says, I felt detached throughout the whole movie, just like the supporting characters. Okay, John didn't like it. Robert Kocher of Flickering Myth, this guy gets around. Mm-hmm. It may not be your traditional blockbuster, but Ad Astra puts most of them to shame. Four out of five. Let's see what Clint Worthington of Consequence of Sound says, Stephen. With a haunting Brad Pitt performance, oh, you know it. He's the jam in my jelly roll. At the center of an existentially arresting personal journey, Ad Astra feels like a boldest, most considered major studio movie we're going to get for a long time. I somehow messed up that sentence. He gives it an A. Stephen Roger Moore, who is James Bond and who is now deceased, says, Like too many imitation space odysseys, it flunks that most basic test. It doesn't make us care what happens. Two out of four. Okay, I'm getting mixed messages here. Kirsten Acuna says, Ad Astra isn't for everyone, like Roger Moore, but it is beautiful, thought-provoking, and may make you want to reach out to loved ones you haven't spoken to in a while. (laughs) What do you think, Stephen? Are you sold on this movie? Heck yeah. I, I wasn't interested at all until I saw them shooting at each other on <laughs> moon, in that, moon yeah. buggies. I was just, I kind of like did a double take. What What the? <laughs> they're, they're shooting at each other in moon buggies on the moon. Space spies. Those bullets that are missing them, are they traveling forever? Like yes. just flying through space forever? Yes. And they're going to puncture the hull of some ship one day, aren't they? Or fly into a sun and kill it. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> the sun's not going to melt it? No, it's a bullet. All right, Stephen, that's Let's Read Rotten Tomatoes. I'm losing my voice. Stephen, <laughs> I'll meet you back in the lounge. Okay, I'll see you there. Have yourself a... Um, a uh, beverage. What are those? Can- they're like... Uh, Sunny D? Grapefruit kind of fruit drinks. They're like water, but flavored. You know what they're called? No. Flavored water. Flavored water? God damn it. What is it called? A buble? Steven, uh, go have a Nescafe, and yeah. uh, I'll see you in a minute. Me with George Clooney over here, having a Nescafe. <laughs> oh, what do you want to hear, man? I don't know, all right? All right, Steven, see you over there. I don't give us none of your bullshit stories, huh? Thank you. Excuse Good night. Me? Here all week, try the veal. And <laughs> Good times. Having a mullet is no way to go through life. No, it's not. Okay, everyone, that was our episode of Entertainment Landfill. I hope you enjoyed it. That was episode 314 of the show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And hey, Steven. Finish your sentence. <laughs> Were you saying that all week? Yes. <laughs> Finish your sentence. Finish your sentence. Guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. And if you would, please visit etlandfill.com. There you will find all of our previous episodes. You will find me on Twitter. Also, you can join our ETL fan club and you can see funny posts and stuff. (laughs) Also, if you want to become a patron, pay as little as a dollar to support the show that you know and love. And that is ET Landfill starring me and Steven. 
the pop culture zealot. Good stuff, right, Stephen? Yes. I will kill you. Oh, my God. So, guys, um, what else can they do, Stephen? Uh, get out there and watch some TV, some movies. That's right. Oh, and Hannah, thank you so much for the voicemail. Thank you, Hannah. It's lovely to hear your voice again. I want to hear from anybody else that's reading the Witcher series, even if you've already read it. Like, some people read it, like, five years ago or whatever when the game came out. Send me a voicemail. Tell me what you think, but don't give me any spoilers. I'd love to hear what other people think of the Witcher series. And guys, what are you waiting for? Get out there. Go watch some Goonies. (laughs) Don't throw up. (laughs) Go do the Trouble Shuffle. Go read some Witcher books. Uh, Go see Hustlers. And I'll see you next time. Woohoo! <laughs> I'll see you, baby, okay? okay. Bye bye. There's just one thing. Oh, well, that's just wrong. 